Hello, everybody. Uh, I am Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan, uh, and I am really excited uh, to be part of this Share the Mic uh, conversation. Buju, Peggy Flanagan, and Dishnakaz, Bababa, Viganikag, Nandunjaba, Mangan, and Dodame. Uh, I am also a citizen of uh, the Minnesota Chippewa tribe enrolled uh, at White Earth. Uh, my family is the Wolf Clan and the role of our clan is to ensure uh, that we're not leaving anyone behind, which is why I am part of uh, this work and super excited to have a conversation uh, with Anissa today. So Anissa, I'm gonna hand it over uh, to you to, to introduce yourself. Sounds good. Hello, everybody. I am Anissa Omar. Um, I am a cabinet member with the Young Women's Initiative, um, as well as a policy fellow with the Muslim Public Affairs Council. Um, and a few background information, I am the daughter of two Somali immigrants, and I currently reside in Mankato, Minnesota. Um, and I am the first of my family to actually be born here in America, more specifically here in Minnesota. And so that's just a little bit about myself. And I'm super excited to have the opportunity to talk with you. Um, and this opportunity was provided by the Women's Foundation of Minnesota in collaboration with Share the Mic Minnesota. And I'm super excited to get into it. Um, <laughs> I do have a few questions for you to kind of start us off. Um, what was like the first time you spoke up for what was right? And how was that feeling? Because I can't imagine it was easy. So that's a, um, that's a great question. And I think uh, that, you know, I don't remember a time when I didn't do that. And part of that is because um, I was raised uh, by a single mom who um, worked harder than anyone uh, I've ever met in my life. And she um, really, uh, I think, instilled in me that if you see something that isn't right or is unjust, that you have to speak up. So um, whether it was in um, grade school and uh, pushing back on um, things that may have been said in the classroom that I didn't think were quite right, um, or uh, later on trying to, to find somebody to run for the school board in Minneapolis um, from the community and it ended up being me, like that's all I think uh, connected. But my best friend reminded me recently of a walkout that I led in junior high school when uh, the school was being remodeled and they weren't uh, putting in facilities uh, that were um, accessible. And uh, I had some feelings about that. And um, I don't know that everybody knew why they were walking out, <laughs> but we were able to get the bulk of uh, the student body to, to do that. And, um, and they made uh, those changes. So I think that's the first the first action, I guess, that I led was in junior high school. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. For me, it was quite the opposite. Mm -hmm. um, my mom, who's um, from Somalia originally, she came here and she's like very, you know, self perseverance like you don't speak out, you don't want to shake it too much because of the consequences that could come about speaking out. And so it was quite the opposite that I'm now learning how to utilize my voice and how to speak up for what was right. For quite some time, I was like, okay, maybe I shouldn't say something, but I'm like, no, I don't have time to be considerate of what other people are feeling, especially in regard to um, my life. And um, kind of following that, like in junior high, oh my gosh, leading a walkout, that's very amazing. I applaud you for that courage. Um, what does power for you now that you're serving as Lieutenant Governor, what does power mean to you? And what does that look like to you? That's also a big question, Anissa, you are, um, you're, you're doing it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think to be really candid with you, um, power made me uncomfortable um, for a long time. And uh, as a indigenous woman, um, I certainly have seen uh, power um, used in a way uh, for since contact, right, that has been um, uh, detrimental to indigenous people, to people of color, to women. Um, but I think, you know, 
if we want to see the change in our communities uh, that we uh, that we frankly deserve, we got to get right with power and feel okay about it, right? So power itself is neutral. It's what you do with that power that makes a difference. And I remember back in the day, I was doing a training um, when I worked at Wellstone Action for the Sheila Wellstone Institute, um, and I was training a group of uh, survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault. And we were talking about power and a woman in the back, she shot her hand up and she said, I'm power hungry. And I was like, okay. And you know, coming from Minnesota, I was like, well, that's interesting. Can you say more about that? <laughs> right? So she said, she said, I am power hungry to make sure that we are uh, electing people who will make sure that what happened to me and my family doesn't happen to anyone else. And so that for, just for me, honestly, was this moment where something clicked and it changed where I was like, all right, yeah, power, we need it. Um, and, you know, sometimes I still struggle with it, uh, but ultimately um, I want to see the power in the hands of people who are most directly impacted. And Anissa, I want to see uh, power in your hands as well. Um, so what, is, what does that look like? Uh, what does that look like for you? Or when I say the word power, like, are you like, ooh, <laughs> or does it make you excited? Like, is it somewhere in between? What do you think? Um, I used to like be scared. I'm like, oh, power, like that's not meant for people who look like me, like as a mm. black Muslim woman. And when I think about power, I don't think of like, to me, I think of individuals. And the two individuals I look, I like think about are like Representative Ilhan Omar, you know, as a Somali woman who is now a US representative, or Rashida Tlaib, who is a Muslim woman who is a representative in positions of power. Um, because for so long, I'm like, oh, th th like that's to me generically, I'm like, oh power what white men have that I will probably mm -hmm. never have but I'm like no I need to step into that power and I need to create power if it's not there for people who look like me and so I started realizing it when I saw representative Omar win the uh state house and then go on to U.S. house. I'm like, oh, and she's actually the reason I ran for student body president. I'm like, oh, I, I can do that. And so yes. I'm just now learning how to step into my power and realizing that I am able and capable of doing it. And so um, I hope young individuals growing up see more of that, um, see more representation in politics. And to me, that's what I think about when I think of power, I think of those two individuals. So I love both of those individuals. Um, uh, had the chance to, to serve with Representative Omar um, in the House, and we are uh, two of the founding members of the People of Color and Indigenous Caucus in, uh, in the legislature. And now that group has grown even more. And like, that's what's up, right? Uh, and I think every cycle, it's going to get bigger and bigger. And so that we don't have to say, you know, the, the first this, the, the second that, that it simply becomes the way that leadership uh, looks in Minnesota and across the country um, and your student body, right? Uh, or at the, the local um, state or national level. So I love that. And like, that's, that's real. Having, you know, Deb Holland, Congresswoman Deb Holland, who was just sworn in as the first Native American Secretary of the Interior, it's a game changer. Yeah. Um, and watching my little girl just see her get sworn in. That's Auntie Deb. That's just like what she <laughs> what she knows now. And um, it's changing and it's changing really, really quickly. And that's all about power. Yeah. And and kind of going back on that, um, as the former state representative and now lieutenant governor, um, throughout your term as state representative, what was the hardest part of passing legislation that you know is important and now what does your role look like in passing legislation as lieutenant governor so i was in the minority uh when i was in uh the legislature so one of our primary roles uh was actually stopping bad things <laughs> from happening right um we weren't able to set the agenda as much but i have to say that you know now being um uh, in this role and having a majority in the House and having uh, the Posse Caucus, which is larger, but also we now have uh, Native women in the House and Senate, it's different because we get to set the agenda. 
Um, so much of my time in the legislature, I think, was spent, um, and this may be familiar to you, uh, just sort of educating people um, uh, on uh, my community and my culture. And so you have to spend like the first 15 minutes of any conversation being like, yeah, like Native people are contemporary people. We're still alive and we're here. And then you could go into you know, whatever issue that you're working on. But a lot of it, my time was spent educating people. Um, but now we get to work on things like making sure that um, in the education system that we're talking about ethnic studies, that we have, so our young people see themselves reflected in their teachers and their curriculum, um, indigenous education for all. So that preamble 15 minutes to any conversation is just what our young people get when they're in the classroom. Um, which is what we should should be be doing. But there's also things like, um, you know, we passed the first increase in MFIP, the Minnesota Family Investment Program, which is cash assistance for families in poverty, um, for the first time in 33 years since my family was on MFIP when I was in first grade. So um, it matters who's at the table, and so a lot of uh, the work that I do is. Um, trying to focus on folks who are certainly most impacted by the decisions that we make, but haven't always had a seat at the table, or even known, frankly, that there is a table at all <laughs> where decisions are, are being made. So that's, um, and now I also see my, my job is to hold the door wide open for other uh, women, uh, women of color who are like, I want to do this work. Um, and uh, I think that that's a big part of, of my job. Right. And that's amazing. Cause like when it comes to people who look like us in politics, not only do we get the representation, but we really see the impacts of that when it comes to policy and policy work. And so it's fun. It's yeah. fun. I have to tell you, like, sometimes I'm like, they gave us the keys to the car, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, do they know right. we're in here? Right. And um, but it's also, that's the good stuff. It is, and I think that's why the Young Women's Initiative is so important and things like share the mic to say like, we're here, we've got solutions um, and people just need to listen. I know. And if you have time, um, I have one final question. During this difficult time, you know, we have COVID, um, addressing racism and so forth. How do you find time to care for yourself? Like, what's your, what do you like to indulge in? Self-care. I'm very curious. And how so, do you find time? <laughs> so um, I uh, am not going to pretend that I do a good job of this. I don't. Um, and uh, the last year for everyone, I think, has been really challenging. Um, and my family has experienced a tremendous amount of loss. And so part of the way I think that um, I've been able to do that is to spend time outside um, as, much as, uh, as much as I can, um, but also get back to our traditional medicines and smudging and um, uh, drinking cedar tea when I need to be grounded back in, um, remembering uh, who I am and where I come from and the people uh, that I come from. Um, but also I will tell you, uh, I watch um, The Bachelor and The Bachelorette and uh, have been going through, um, back through old uh, seasons of uh, Felicity. <laughs> So I'm just being really honest in these, so like, you know, my husband will turn on documentaries and I'm like, cool, cool. I'm going to go watch something else. Cause like my whole life is a documentary right now and just need to, uh, you know, just spend that time. But what do you do? I'm interested in like, you know, you have a lot on your plate uh, right now too, with your, um, you're like involved in all these boards and super engaged in community and so I know when you do that community work, you are holding up the community while simultaneously needing to hold up yourself and oftentimes your immediate family. So what does that look like for you? Because I could use some tips. For me, I'm trying to like 
learned, I've been trying out meditation, but I'm not like the quiet, like I need guided meditation. Like I need someone talking to me. I'm like, okay. And so when I, I'm currently studying for the LSAT, which is like very stressful. So when I feel myself getting worked up, I'm like, okay, I need to go listen to a guided meditation for a little bit, but I'm similar. I'm like in a similar boat, like reality TV, specifically like the Real Housewives, like Real Housewives of Atlanta, Real Housewives of Potomac. I'm like, that's like my little therapy. I'm like, oh, okay, I need to watch this. I'm like watching seasons over and over and over again. And so I try to find time to meditate every day to try to get myself grounded. Um, but it's very difficult to stick to it. So I'm hoping to be more consistent. I appreciate that. And I appreciate your love of reality television and just being honest there with me. Um, do you, um, and as you're talking about guided meditation, uh, I don't know about you, but like, I'm an extrovert. So being quiet is like absolutely one of my biggest challenges. So you have an ally um, in me of needing that someone talking and guiding you through it. Otherwise I will, my brain will go lots of places unless I have somebody there with me, right. um, at least in my, my ears helping mm -hmm. me out. So that's a good thing. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for your time and for this amazing conversation. Well, thank you. And um, I just appreciate, uh, I appreciate you and uh, thank you for serving as part of uh, the, the Young Women's Initiative, but also um, thank you for studying to take the LSAT. Um, I think uh, we need um, more folks who are, we need more women of color. We need more um, uh, women in general, and we just need more human beings who uh, understand the, the lives and the, of, of people who are most directly impacted, um, who are going to law school, and who are fighting for justice. So um, I have a tremendous amount of gratitude uh, to you for your service, and um, that you pushed past the discomfort, and we're willing to, to speak up um, and keep doing that, and let me know how it can help you in uh, making your voice heard. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you.